What's going on everyone? In today's video, I wanna share with you guys three simple rules or patterns you guys can use to catch more and bigger smallmouth bass during the fall months. These are the three tenants that I kind of live and die by during the fall and basically how I break down the Great Lakes or inland bodies of water when I'm out there chasing fall smallmouth. So I wanna share those with you guys to help you have more success during the fall months. Now, before we dive into that, just a quick introduction for those of you guys that don't know me. My name is Benjamin Nowak and this channel here is the Smallmouth Experience, 100% smallmouth bass fish and focus YouTube channel. So if you guys love smallmouth bass fishing or enjoy smallmouth bass fishing and are not already subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you guys consider subscribing down below and growing this community and make this thing absolutely blow up. Now today's video is really gonna be focused on the patterns that I use in the fall and this is the dead middle of the fall. This is like your 58 to 48 degree range when those fish are starting to move shallow, when they're crushing bait fish um, and when they're really kind of moving onto those shallow flats and in that shallower water situation. This is not gonna talk about their movements or what drives them shallow. You guys can check that out in my last video where I'm talking about fall smallmouth movements. I'll have it linked up here in the corner for you guys to go check that out. But this is really gonna be focused on the patterns, the three patterns that I use and the baits that I'm using during the actual fall to have a lot of success on the water. So I'm gonna start by sharing with you guys the rules that I use, the three patterns or three ideas that I use to break down my body's water. And then we're gonna dive into each one. Those three main rules that I live by are shallow, current and warmer. These are the three things that I'm looking for during the fall to have a lot of success. Shallower water, areas where there's current or areas where there's warmer water. And a lot of times that warmer water is gonna come into play as we move later into the fall, but it's something that will always be in the back of my mind, especially when I'm looking for shallow fall fish. So the biggest thing you have to think about with rule number one is shallow water, shallow water. What's driving these fish shallow is bait fish. So shallow has to be relative. If your body of water is 100 feet deep, shallow water might be 15 foot of water, which to a lot of you guys sounds deep, but when there's 100 foot of water available, 15 foot is very, very shallow. So kind of keep in mind shallow is relative. It could mean three foot of water, could mean 15 foot of water. It just depends on the body of water that you're fishing um, because that's especially true on glacial lakes where you have really, really deep basins. Uh, these fish might push up in 15 foot of water and come up and attack jerk baits and crank baits and swim baits up in the water column above their heads. So keeping water shallow is absolutely relative. The other thing I think about when I'm looking for shallow water situations are cover and contour changes. These are the ingredients on some of my favorite fall spots because it makes it really easy to target very specific locations. One of the biggest mistakes I think people make during the fall is going to these big expansive flats that have one type of bottom composition and no contour changes and trying to break that thing down. It's very difficult. When you go up to a big rock field, when you go up to big rock flat, it's hard to break down a half a mile by a half a mile area versus going up to a, a sand flat where there's one rock pile or one grass patch and really breaking that thing down, it's a lot easier that way. So what you wanna do is really spend the time looking at your maps, spend the time looking at your graphs and find out, okay, there's a rock pile on the sand flat that's gonna congregate these fish in really predictable locations. Now, the one thing that's driving these fish shallow during the fall, again, is the bait fish. So you want there to be some sort of bait fish present, whether that's perch or shiners, or if you guys are in shad driven bodies of water, which our Great Lakes have and St. Clair has, you're looking for bait fish to be in that shallow water. So you wanna find areas where, you know, there's perch fishermen or there's bait up in those shallow water areas. You don't just want to be fishing around nothingness because it's a lot harder to break that water down. And you don't just want to be fishing around an area where there's no bait fish because no bait fish equals no bass. So shallow water, the key ingredients that I'm looking for are some sort of cover, some sort of contour change. And again, it's relative and you want to find some sort of bait fish up there in that shallow water that's going to be triggering these fish or driving these fish shallow. Now in my last video where Ron and I went out and had a lot of success, we actually went to a very shallow flat in like two to five foot of water and we're catching fish on a medium diving crankbait. And what's really cool about this is it was an area neither Ron nor I had ever fished, but it was a giant boulder field. And inside this boulder field, there were big patches of sand and these fish were actually not sitting in the rock. They were sitting off of the rock in the sand. And what you heard me talk about in the video was I was cranking that crankbait and I'd hit a lip and my bait would stop. And then I'd pop the rod and it'd come out and you'd start digging into the sand. And that's where you got a lot of your bites. Some of my favorite baits to cover shallow water with are, as I mentioned, a medium or smaller diving crankbait. This is a Berkeley Dredger 14.5, which is a 14 and a half foot diving crankbait. Um, but what I like about this bait is how small it is compared to other baits with the same Diving depth, this is a Strike King 5XD, 
This is a Berkeley Dredger 14.5. You're looking at a significantly smaller body, significantly smaller diving lip, and uh, it just gives those fish a lot smaller profile. And the bait that I was throwing in that video with Ron is this OSP Blitz EX or Max DR. And as you can see, again, you're looking at a lot smaller body profile as opposed to the Strike King 5XD. So going with a smaller body crankbait is one thing that I also like to do with smallmouth because it gives those fish a lot better ability to get the bait in their mouth. One of the questions that I got on that last video though was how was I fishing this crankbait which dives down to about 10 to 15 foot of water in three to four to five foot of water. And the biggest thing is I actually like going with a deeper diving crankbait during the fall because I want to be able to reel it a lot more slowly. Now this might've been overkill. I probably could have gone to like an eight foot diving crankbait or a six foot diving crankbait in five foot of water. But the biggest thing that I wanted was this bait to dive and get to bottom quickly. So what this would do is it hit the water and dive fast. And then I would slowly uh, reel this bait back in. I wasn't burning it. I wasn't really kind of cranking it super fast. I was really using that reel and just kind of keeping this bait on bottom and using my rod to pull it along. And that was something Ron had figured out earlier in the day was these fish wanted the bait moving slower. So by fishing a deeper diving bait, I could keep it on bottom more easily and get these fish to trigger. Another thing I was doing was I was upsizing my line. So I was going to 16 pound test fluorocarbon and especially around that rock, that really heavy cover when you're digging your bait down on bottom, using heavier line is gonna make sure you don't break off fish. Neither Ron nor I broke off a single fish that day. And I really think it's because we were using heavier line. I was using 16 pound test with a 10 to 15 foot diving crankbait. So that bait really would only dive about eight foot of water max for most of the baits. So even though I'm using a deeper diving crankbait, it doesn't necessarily dive that deep because of the line size I'm using. I'm using a six four to one gear ratio reel. And this is the Temple Fork Outfitters tactical glass rod, which should be coming out this month. It's an awesome rod. It's a glass rod, which means has um, more of a parabolic bend than your graphite style cranking rods. And it's just a really good choice when you're fishing any sort of bait with treble hooks because it allows those fish to fight it a lot easier. Another bait I like to fish during the fall months is a lipless crankbait. Now this is a Berkeley War Pig. It's just a really good half ounce crankbait, something that I can sling a long ways and cover a lot of water with. But what I also like about a lipless is your ability to fish slowly through an area when you know where fish are at. But when you know where fish are located on a flight, you can make targeted casts and fish that bait a lot more slowly through that area. So having a lipless crankbait is kind of a target fishing bait, but it's also something you can cover water quickly with, which is pretty essential during the fall is just covering the water until you find fish and then sitting there. I'm also throwing this on a little bit heavier line. This is 17 pound test fluorocarbon, but by fishing a lipless, you're able to cover a lot of water and it's just a great way to get a lot of bites. So those are the ingredients that I use to break down shallow water situations during the fall. You want cover, contour changes and bait fish. And those are the three things you're gonna look for to have success on shallow water locations during the fall months. Rule number two is going to be current. Now current could be a river mouth, it could be a marina, it could be a pier head where there's a lot of wind blowing into it that's creating artificial current or artificial undertow where these bait fish are going up to. And I don't really know why this happens, but a lot of bait fish push up into these areas during the fall months. I don't know if they're going up there to spawn. I don't know if they're going up there because it's warmer water, but a lot of bait fish are gonna push into the river mouths, up into the rivers, uh, into really predictable locations in the rivers themselves during the fall. And this is one of the best times and one of my favorite times to look for current locations for smallmouth bass. In fact, this is one of my favorite times here to go out into the river that's nearby my house and have a lot of success for smallmouth because they push down into the deeper, more faster flowing current locations and you can catch a lot of fish really quickly. So looking for current situations is a great way to catch big smallmouth during the fall. Again, kind of going back to that last video with Ron, you guys can really see how this current plays, especially on the Great Lakes, looking for an area where there's a marina, there's no river there, a marina with water flowing in and water pushing back out that's really congregating these smallmouth bass into predictable locations during the fall. We were fishing basically at the mouth of a marina with wind blowing into it, creating artificial current up against the rocks. And there's actually an undertow that causes these bait fish to get up in that shallow water and the smallmouth to be up there feeding on them. So it can be a great way to catch big smallmouth, whether you're in river systems itself, like the one I have down the road from the house, which is a small river chain or on the Great Lakes where these fish are pushed up into the current. So some of my favorite current situational baits are again a crankbait and a lipless, but I like to throw some sort of swim bait or a rig. And this is something you guys saw me throw in that video a little bit. 
But the reason this works so well is that it looks like a small pot of bait fish, right? You have a bunch of different baits on here. And now this is a frenzy bait seven wire sniper rig with two dummies. Um, but having some sort of a rig or having some sort of little swim bait rigged up is going to be a great way to target these locations. You can keep it up off bottom. You can make it look like a bait fish, obviously, but it's a really effective technique to fish these current locations. Obviously I would prefer to fish a moving bait during the fall. It's one of my favorite bites. And I think that's the reason that a lot of guys like fishing during the fall is that you can fish moving baits and fish quickly and get bites. But in current situations, I also like to pick up a slower moving bait when the bike gets tough, like a Ned rig or a tube, because these fish will get positioned behind really obvious current breaks. And uh, one of the best ways to pick those apart is with those slower moving bottom presentations. It's something you can both drift through the area or cast in there and really slowly fish, whether it's a rock or a big boulder in a river, or whether it's uh, a big pier head that comes out, you're gonna have a back eddy, you're gonna have something that's kind of breaking the current and you guys can fish a bottom bouncing bait or a bottom bait effectively through those areas and trigger a lot more fish to bite after it starts to seem to slow down. So don't be afraid to throw a Ned Rig or a tube in these areas as well, because you guys can keep that bite going a lot longer by fishing a bottom, slower presentation. We've talked about shallower, we've talked about current, and now we get to talk about warmer water. And this really is my last resort. This is what I think of when your fall bite's on the decline. When that water hits that 50 to 48 degree range and below, this is when I start to think, where is the warmest water on my body of water? Where's the warmest location on my body of water. And this could be the northernmost part of your lake where your lake gets the most amount of sunlight. This could be a river mouth that flows into your great lake where the water is just a couple degrees warmer. That's going to draw these fish to this locations. But one of the biggest things that I consider, especially when I start to think about warmer water, is deeper water areas that are still relatively shallow that will keep these fish and extend that fall bite just a little bit longer. And one of the biggest things about deeper water is how much more stable it is. It's not as affected by the elements, not the air, the sun, the wind, or the waves. And so it can help extend your fall bite. These fish out there are a lot more oblivious to what's happening in shallower water. And so you can kind of extend that fall bite before you have to start to push off into those deeper water areas, start throwing a blade and those bottom baits for those wintertime fish. And a lot of the deeper areas that I'm looking for are the first breaks with some hard contour change that kind of lead up onto your shallow flats or that hard break right before it pushes up into the creek in the river mouths where these fish are pushing up into the current locations. So you're still looking by those shallow water areas, by those current blown or current driven locations, but it's that first break right outside of it that's just meant to help extend your fall bite a little bit longer. I don't think this is gonna be the end all be all. A lot of times you're just gonna have fish stopping along there. It's not a lot of times those giant pods that you get when you're up there shallow, when they're up there feeding on bait, when they're up in the rivers that are really targeting those bait fish on those current locations. But it's something to help you guys go out there and catch a couple extra fish before you have to push back out into your wintering holes. And that's it. Those are the three rules that I follow during the fall to help me go out with a plan. And those are the three patterns that I use to look for fish during the fall months. Shallower, current, and warmer are the three things that I think of every time I go out on a body of water during the fall to hopefully go out and have some success. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below, or there's something that you guys do that maybe I didn't mention, please let me know because I always like to hear about what you guys are doing to have success during the fall, because it helps me kind of get a better understanding too of things that I can try when I go to my bodies of water. But again, any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section below. I like to interact with you guys. And as always, if you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button, and I'll talk to you later. Take care, tight lines, God bless, pursue passion.